Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our famous physiology playlist. In previous videos, we talked about gastrointestinal physiology. From top to bottom, from proximal to distal, from oral to anal, from gum to bum. Today, we'll start a new series, Endocrine Physiology. And we'll start by the difference between genomic and non-genomic actions. The idea is pretty simple. If you are a lipid-soluble hormone, and the cell membrane is lipid, as you know, it's the lipid bilayer, then lipid can diffuse through lipid with ease. So, I will enter the cell, no problem. I will reach the nucleus, and I'll influence the genes of the nucleus. Hashtag genomic action. However, if I am a water-soluble hormone, it means that I cannot cross the lipid bilayer membrane, which means you have to put the receptor on the outside, not on the inside, like here. It has to be outside because I cannot enter. And then this receptor will communicate with the nucleus. How in the world will the receptor on the surface of the cell communicate with the nucleus inside the cell? Well, you'll need a middleman between them. A second messenger. So the hormone is the primary messenger or first messenger. Then you have a second messenger, which is the middleman, and you will reach the nucleus. The question is, did the water-soluble hormone reach the nucleus directly? No. Hashtag non-genomic action. One of the famous middlemen is the G-protein system, which connects the hormone on the outside to the nucleus on the inside. Please watch the videos in this physiology playlist in order. Let me tell you how this playlist is structured. First, you go to YouTube, go to Medicosis channel, then go to my playlist, click on Physiology Playlist. Video 1 through 25 is Introduction, the Cell Membrane, the Transport, Osmosis, Facilitated Diffusion, Simple Diffusion, etc., even the Fick Principle and the Donnan Equilibrium. From 26 to 40, these videos talk about the autonomic nervous system. From video 41 till 50, we're talking about nerve physiology, the story of the action potential, absolute refractory period, relative refractory period, etc. 51 to 60, we talk about muscle physiology. Video 61 through 70 is the blood and immune system. The last series was 71 to 90, gastrointestinal physiology. Today, we'll start endocrine physiology. Note that the pancreas could be exocrine and endocrine as well. See how I sneak that in? As for kidney physiology, it's available on my website, medicosisperfectionatus.com. All my handwritten notes for these videos, the slides that you see, are also downloadable on my website. So what is the difference between endocrine and exocrine? If the gland has a duct, it's exocrine. If the gland is ductless, it's endocrine. The exocrine gland usually will put those secretions into a nearby organ. Example, the pancreatic duct putting those digestive enzymes into the duodenum, a nearby structure. Conversely, endocrine glands, since they are ductless, they will dump their secretions to the blood. And the blood will take those hormones usually to distant organs all over the body. We call it endo because it goes to the internal environment, i.e. to the blood. Okay, medicosis, now I understand exocrine and endocrine. But what is autocrine? It's when the cell secretes something to act upon the same cell, on the self. Auto means self. That's why you have an automatic transmission. Auto, self. Matic, motion. How about paracrine? Para means parallel. Crin means secretion. Oh, so it's a cell secreting some secretions to the interstitial fluid to act upon parallel cells. Today's video will talk about some stuff that was discussed in detail in several videos in my endocrinology playlist. What's the difference between the physiology playlist and the endocrinology playlist? Physiology playlist is about physiology. Endocrinology is about internal medicine. So we talk about everything from embryology, anatomy, histology, physiology, and even pathology. Remember, who's the CEO of the endocrine system of your body? Hypothalamus. Who's the general manager, which is under the CEO? Pituitary. There are three glands that listen and obey the pituitary. We'll call them the employees. These include thyroid gland, adrenal cortex, and gonads. Their hormones are mostly lipid-soluble, i.e. slow in action. However, 
there are three glands that do not care about the pituitary. We call them the independent contractors, such as your parathyroid glands, adrenal medulla, and the endocrine pancreas. These hormones are fast. Why is that? Because if you are lipid soluble, you cannot float freely in water, which is in the plasma. Someone has to carry you in that water, and this is the plasma protein. But when you go to the cell membrane, which is lipid by a layer, you can diffuse on your own because you are lipid or fat, and the cell membrane is lipid. Lipid in lipid, everything is gonna be doozy. Like a sharp knife in warm butter. However, this diffusion takes time. That's why lipid soluble hormones are slow in action. Conversely, if you're water soluble, well, you can float in the blood because the blood is water. However, when you reach the membrane, you will never diffuse. That's why we have to put the receptor on the outside to wait for you. Once you bind to your receptor, it's super fast. It's just like flipping a switch. That's why water soluble hormones are faster in action. But hey, medicosis, how did you flip the switch? First, let me tell you what I mean by flip a switch. I mean send the signal from the membrane to the nucleus to tell the nucleus to perform the desired action. How did I flip the switch? It's the hormone signal transduction pathways. Look, we talked about all of this in great detail in my endocrinology playlist. Today, we'll mention them very briefly. First, the lipid soluble. If you're lipid soluble, you can diffuse. Once you diffuse, you will reach the nucleus. Hormone receptor elements will activate your DNA, DNA replication to make another copy, then transcription to make RNA, then translation to make proteins. And this applies for the lipid soluble hormones as well as vitamin D and vitamin A because they are also lipid soluble vitamins. Or the receptor could be waiting on the outside on the cell surface if the hormone or ligand is water soluble. And these include G protein coupled receptors, ligand gated ion channels, and enzyme linked receptors. What does ligand mean? It means I need a chemical to bind to the receptor, like a key in a lock, like a truck in a dock. But now let's talk about the G protein. Hey, medicosis, why do you call it G? Why not the F protein, as in F me? We call them G because they need GTP, guanosine triphosphate. This is how the G protein looks like when it's inactive. But upon activation, i.e. when the water-soluble hormone binds to the receptor, and we will bind GTP and leave your GDP alone. The alpha, which is active, will leave the other doofuses, beta and gamma, alone. Now the alpha is active. Active to do what? Well, it could be GQ. In this case, we will increase calcium and cause smooth muscle contractions. Or it could be GS for stimulation. Stimulation of what? Of adenylate cyclase enzyme, which converts ATP into cyclic AMP. This will increase your heart contractility and will dilate your blood vessels. Or it could be G, from G protein, I, inhibitory. Inhibitory of whom? Of adenylate cyclase, which will inhibit the conversion of ATP to cyclic AMP, so you'll end up with less cyclic AMP. Here is the story of the GQ. Here is the story of the GS with adenylate cyclase, ATP, and cyclic AMP. GI is the exact opposite of GS. I is inhibitory, S is stimulatory of adenylate cyclase. How do you convert ATP to cyclic AMP? It's adenylate cyclase. How do you take cyclic AMP to the cleaners and degrade it into pieces of trash? Phosphodiesterase. But I still don't get the point of the G protein. Well, this hormone is water soluble. It cannot enter and talk to the nucleus. Therefore, someone, a messenger, will have to transmit the signal from the outside to the inside of the cell. This is the story of the G protein, which will bind GTP upon activation. Beta and gamma will go to hell. Alpha is now active. Active to do what? To activate the enolate cyclase, for example, from ATP to cyclic AMP, which will activate protein kinase A. A kinase is an enzyme that adds a phosphate. So the enzyme will become enzyme plus phosphate. Transporter will become transporter phosphate. Receptor will become receptor phosphate. Transcription factor will become transcription factor phosphate, i.e. you're activating all of your artillery. 
when your G protein is active, it's binding GTP, and alpha alone will dissociate from the doofuses beta and gamma, which will remain hanging from your cell membrane. Now I'm active, 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 until you're not active. GTPase will break down GTP into GDP. When you bind to GDP, you are inactive, and the beta and gamma will come back and bind to alpha, now you are inactive. And you wait until the water-soluble hormone comes, and then you activate again. So we talked about the intracellular receptor, these are the steroids, the thyroid, vitamin D, vitamin A, etc. These are lipid-soluble, they do not need a cell surface receptor. The receptor is on the inside, because the hormone is lipid, and will be able to diffuse through the membrane until it finds the receptor inside the cell, in the cytoplasm or on the nucleus. And we talked about the cell surface receptor G protein family. Next, let's talk about ligand gated ion channels, GABA. Here's your lovely GABA, or it could be acetylcholine, glutamate, or IP3. All of them work by ligand gated ion channel. Something has to bind to the receptor. That's the ligand, that's the receptor. And then they will hug each other like a key in a lock like a truck in a dock, like a screwdriver in a screw. And then once this happens, we are active. Oh, look at that. Active to do what? Maybe open a channel. Oh, so that the ions can influx or efflux. Exactly. This is how GABA works in the brain, because GABA is an inhibitory neurotransmitter. How did it inhibit my brain? It activated and opened chloride channel. Now chloride will go into the neuron. Chloride is negative. Anytime something negative enters into your neuron, you become inactivated, hyperpolarized. Conversely, anytime something positive, like sodium, enters your neuron, you'll be activated. Hashtag depolarized. See, medicine makes so much sense once you understand what the flip you're talking about. This is very important because some medications, like benzodiazepines and barbiturates, will actually bind to your GABA receptor, which is made of five proteins. And then once it is active, because here is the ligand, here is the receptor, or here is the ligand, here is the receptor, we will open the chloride channel, chloride will enter, causing inactivation of your brain. That's why these medications are sedatives and hypnotics. You are tired and lazy and hypnotized. Next, the enzyme linked receptors. Receptor linked to an enzyme. No duh. It could be the receptor tyrosine kinase or it could be a receptor protein. The former is the story of insulin. The latter is the story of TGF beta. Let's start by the first story, the story of insulin and its famous insulin receptor, which is a receptor tyrosine kinase. After you eat, you digest and absorb. Now there is tons of sugar in your blood. Pancreas will get stimulated and the pancreas will release insulin from the beta cells of islets of Langerhans. Insulin is now in the blood. How does insulin talk to the target cell? By acting upon an insulin receptor. And the insulin receptor is a tyrosine kinase receptor. What does that mean? It's a receptor that is linked to tyrosine kinase. What's a kinase? It's an enzyme that adds phosphate. Hashtag phosphorylation. And before you know it, we activate this GLUT4, secrete it into the cell membrane. GLUT4 is literally the gate by which glucose is going to enter into the cell, leaving less glucose in the blood. So the function of insulin is to lower your blood sugar. Oh, that makes sense. But where is the glucose going? To your cell. Example, skeletal muscle or fat cells. What are these cells going to do with the sugar? Well, all kinds of things. We can burn it if you want energy right now, or we can store it for a rainy day. If you want to burn it, it's called glycolysis. If you want to store it for later, it's called glycogen synthesis. Why don't they teach like this in school? Here is the insulin and here is the insulin receptor. Tyrosine kinase activity we will phosphorylate the target. If you're getting started or if you're studying for your MCAT, you do not need to know the rest of the story. But if you're a pro, of course you need to learn everything here. And we talked about this in a separate video in my endocrinology playlist. The video is titled Receptor Tyrosine Kinase. Next is the story of the TGF-beta, receptor protein, serine or thurionine. A kinase is an enzyme that adds a phosphate. Look at that, the TGF-beta is binding to this receptor protein. 
which is serine or threonine, and this is part of your cell membrane. It's a transmembrane receptor. So we talked about all of this, and I've told you that you're either GQ coupled or GS coupled. But there is something else, which is non-receptor tyrosine kinase, very similar to the first one. However, there is no tyrosine kinase in it. Instead of tyrosine kinase, we will have the JAK stat system. JAK gets activated, which will activate STAT, and now the growth hormone, which is still waiting on the outside because it cannot enter, because this is water soluble, but your membrane is lipid soluble, so the growth hormone will wait outside. All of this is flipping the switch, sending the signal to the nucleus so that the nucleus can make proteins so that the growth hormone can function and make you grow. Now take it to the next level and go watch my endocrinology playlist. Also, don't forget to watch my calcium calmodulin system, which you'll find in my physiology playlist. I also have an endocrine pharmacology course made of 15 videos, plus cases, plus notes, which you can download today at medicosisperfectionalis.com. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.